All right, welcome to House Talk. My name is Dylan Chalk, and we are lucky to have Mark Parlay in the house today. He is the building consultant. He's got over 40 years of experience in the construction trades. And for a lot of us, Mark kind of has the dream job. He gets to tear things apart and actually find the moisture problems that are lurking underneath. And after years of doing this, he has become a moisture control specialist. Uh, he's certified for EFIS inspections. Uh, he's certified by the Exterior Design Institute and many, many other qualifications. A lot of home inspectors might have seen Mark speaking uh, at one of our home inspection conferences. And he's also authored numerous articles in the Journal of Light Construction. Uh, super lucky to have uh, Mark Parley with us today, the building consultant. Thanks for being here, Mark. You bet. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, fun. Uh, so Mark and I were, were just in uh, New Orleans uh, at the ASHI Inspection World Conference, and uh, I was uh, he was giving a presentation, and I, I was doing mine on, on fiber cement siding, and Mark was nice enough to swing by and kind of uh, check out uh, my presentation. We thought it might be nice to meet up and you know, the the title of my presentation is, is Visual Inspection of Fiber Cement Siding. And uh, by that, it's sort of these are the things that home inspectors see on the outside. But Mark often has the point of view of what might be lurking underneath, like this photo that we have here from a job where he was uh, tearing apart the siding. So it was pretty fun to review my slides of, from the field and kind of go through with Mark, uh, you know, what, what these clues might mean. Some of these things are kind of little stuff that might not be a big deal, and some of these things can lead to, to moisture problems. So, um, Mark, we'll just kind of dive right into some of the observations from the field uh, from my class here, if that sounds good to you. That, that sounds really good. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, the banter we had going on in – uh, New Orleans when we were reviewing this and and there was a guy in your booth there that said man I wish we could have recorded that and I, <laughs> that's so, right. so, that's so right. this is an attempt this is an attempt to recreate that hopefully it goes well that's right that's right so cool well so buckle your seat belts we'll try to get through a whole bunch of slides here everybody uh, so I mean we all know this is the the modern back flashing detail that we do um, but you know as home inspectors certainly if you're doing an older fiber cement installation like 2003 they they never had that butt joint or almost never have the, the back flashing at the butt joint. Um, so, uh, you know, here's a photo of, you know, pretty typical older installation. It looks like that might have been a site cut board, but it, the edge wasn't primed and there's no uh, no back flashing there. So, Mark, is this is the, the absence of these flashings at butt joints? Are you seeing this causing problems on exposed sides of the building? I'll tell you what. <clears throat> It's good to always keep the water from behind the cladding. You don't want it migrating behind the cladding. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were several ways to treat the, the butt joints. And we started installing James Hardy fiber cement board in 1993, the fall of 1993. Mm -hmm. And the way that the, the butt joints were handled was either to leave a space and caulk it mm -hmm. or put an H clip yep. in. Yep. And of course you want your weather resistant barrier on over the envelope before you start your siding so that it can protect the sheathing from any water that gets in. Yep. But um, we've seen several attempts that, at keeping the water out. And if I ever come to a job like what you've exampled here and there's no flashing behind it, I will recommend that people flash behind that. You don't want water going in here. Yep. And I have seen problems with water migration at a joint such as this that was unprotected. Yep. Good to know. And and so, you know, I mean, this this would be an example of one where there is a pretty big gap and you could caulk it. Right. I mean, that that is allowed by Hardy. Um, you could also here where you don't have nails in your way, you could retrofit um, a metal flashing tab behind there. Is that a, what do you have a, a favored sort of choice of, of a retrofit here? Caulking would be the least uh, desirable. And the reason being Hardy used to recommend that in past the uh, installation instructions that 
the caulking was one of the ways that they sealed these joints. But I'll tell you what happens if if you leave a one eighth inch gap and you put your caulking in there and it was to move and expand one eighth inch out, open open up one eighth inch more, yeah. that's a hundred percent joint movement. Yeah. And most polyurethane sealants only operated about a 30% expansion. Yeah, even good. even a 50% e expansion doesn't doesn't work well. And then chances are that end the butt joint ends of the siding aren't really cleaned that well. So when you do apply that sealant to them, it doesn't adhere very well. Yeah. And in some worst cases it pulls apart a little bit, leaving a small gap there and water as it runs over that surface there's a capillary effect that pulls the water into that narrow gap yep and yep. creates problems especially in a freeze thaw environment yeah where it wets that siding material and then it freezes and when moisture freezes it expands nine percent and you end up with a spalling at the joint yeah. which is pretty unattractive yep yeah, and and now now the the system's really entering failure mode at that point. Um, exactly. Yeah. So so my on this specific example right here, my recommendation would be to try to slip in a slip sheet behind there and get it to drain out properly. Yep. Yeah. No, that's good. Um, it, I mean, caulking, even if it were executed perfectly and in a complete perfect world, you're probably lucky if it lasts three years on the exposed side of the building. <laughs> and well, and to, with that joint, with that joint movement, and I don't know that it'll last three years even. It, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. So here's kind of this one. You can tell that somebody probably used some some basic building wrap as a sort of back flashing because this looks like it comes over to the board above. Um, but, you know, some red flags here, you can almost see how the, the material is swelling up. Uh, we can see some cracking of the board above here. Um, it almost looks like somebody retrofit a flashing in here above the window. Pretty, pretty ugly detail here. Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, that's And a point on that material that's there in behind as a flashing behind the butt joint. Yeah. That looks like it's maybe one of the house wraps that has the woven texture to it yep. and i've seen a lot of those break down and they let moisture intrude through the woven material yep. and 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 uh the uv rays could break that material down as well yeah i would i would bet it's not listed for uv exposure for all that long i don't know but i'm with you there yeah Interesting. So, and then this is one that that we see a lot where we get this sort of, you know, they're trying to, to pin back the butt joints. And then, you know, here we can see what Mark was already saying, that caulking joint has already failed. Uh, they kept the pin back a little bit so it didn't crack the corner of the siding. But um, it, what's always frustrating to me about this is it makes it a lot harder to retrofit a flashing now because we got the fastener in our way. Sure does. Yeah. And especially uh, a face fastener is a problem but when you try to retrofit that flashing up and under and get it back up under the lap of the one above a lot of times you run into those nails that are up there on top as well uh, uh, yeah that makes sense yeah so tricky tricky stuff retrofitting flashings i mean you, you got to have a clear path just to be able to get to get into them yeah it is tricky it's always best to do it right from the start yeah yeah, yeah. So here's, I mean, this is a butt joint that, um, while I think we both agree that caulking is not our favorite it, it, it for, I can't remember how old this house was, but at least it seems to be performing well to date. So um, I, I don't know, I'd, I'd probably just leave well enough alone here. If, the, if every butt joint looked this good, you'd, you'd, you'd probably just call it good. <laughs> I, I would. That That's a, a joint to leave alone and, and main, maintain as needed. It's yeah. obvious that when people do a certain detail it could bring a w with it more maintenance so if you have caulk joints at your butt joints on your fiber cement board 
that may very well be one that is a higher maintenance schedule. So you should go out and review them and caulk them as needed. Yeah, that's great advice. And I, I have some comments in my report where, you know, butt joints don't have a back flashing. It's an older caulk detail and usually they're failing somewhere. So I'm recommending someone go through and, and caulk where failing and just that you have to keep these maintained to, to keep it waterproof. That's right. Good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is an interesting joint. I mean, I, I sort of wonder if this is the moderate contact they talk about. That's uh, <laughs> as a, the mysterious moderate contact that Hardy calls for. Uh, I I always wondered about moderate co contact, and and what I've come to understand, moderate contact would be placing that board up there and just touching it, rather than bowing it out mm -hmm. and fastening it and then pushing it in. Yeah that would be excessive yeah. uh, force of contact. And yeah. I've seen people do that. And, but you know, when I don't, I don't know that I like those pin backs either because they are up in the face up, up higher where there's a void underneath the siding Yeah. and pin backs, some of the way they work, they work. Some of the ways they work is when that pin nail goes into the, to the lap that's below it. That gives it a little bit of hold. Yeah, sure. If if you were in sheath, wall sheathing up in the field here that was not an OSB or a plywood, if it, it didn't have any real structural uh, holding power, such as the old fiberboard mm -hmm. or maybe foam wall sheathing, that per, those particular pins would do uh, no good whatsoever. Yeah, that's a great point. You're you're above the other board, so you're in that little void, that sort of triangular void there. Yeah, no, that's exactly. A great point. You know, another interesting thing about this picture is sort of you, you really see how if it's in moderate contact, the caulking joint's just never going to work. I mean, it's, there's not enough of a gap to even get a bead of caulk in there. You know. That's right. Yes. I mean, you could smear a bunch on top, but it, it's not going to last at all. So really, if you're installing the butt joints to moderate contact, it, you know, while Hardy does let you do caulking, it, it's just, it's sort of nearly impossible to execute it in any reliable way. It, it does. And, and the old Hardy instructions stated that you, you leave a one eighth inch gap if you're going to caulk the joints. Mm -hmm. And that would be like your sort of basic minimum joint that you can actually caulk, you know, you can fit a bead of caulk in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Sometimes you see these, I see these around here and like there's, this was like a trend in the 2000s. Somebody would use like a roofing nail or something with a fat head and sort of try to pin back right at the, at the butt joint there. Um, I don't know. This one seems like it's performing. Okay. It's, it's sort of not really correct in my mind, but. Uh, no, um, I remember the, 2000s, the early 2000s, and seeing this done, and I hate to admit it, but I probably was guilty of a little bit of that myself. <laughs> well, you know, I, these are the things about our, our business, right? We're always learning, and, and uh, yeah, you know, we, we learn and, and stuff. So, yeah, but you know, I mean, nobody was doing back flashings then. Uh, I must say, as a pin back, I, I think I'd prefer this to like at least nailing into the board, the corner of the board where you're really likely to crack it. Um, yeah. So in this particular picture, I don't, no harm, no foul. It's sort of not really done right. That's right. Seems that's like, right. <laughs> a high that. maintenance potential yeah. there. Yeah, that's but right. Yeah. You're right. But, you know, so anyway, I mean, and this is one of the tricky things for home inspectors when you're inspecting Hardy is I feel like we're constantly seeing things that aren't right, but aren't worth fixing. And, and that's, uh, I, I, I believe that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and again, if it's performing, um, that's really I don't know why it's performing, but it's probably good to leave well enough alone sometimes when that's you right. have these smaller that's issues. That's right. And so we'll keep flying through these. I mean, we're going to see a few of these slides coming up where these little things could actually be a big deal and letting a lot of water in. So anyway, it's a good one where it's, you know, it's not right, but it's just is what it is at this point, unless you have to do something about it. So that's right. Um, so, I mean, we run into these a lot, particularly the early 2000s where I am a lot. The, the face nailed corners, they used a full sized head. The building is expanding and contracting. We're sort of cracking out the corners and stuff. Um, uh, are you seeing, you know, have you seen this? I mean, I would assume if you have a lot of these, this is going to lead to some pretty substantial water entry. 
I, I have seen those and depending on the brand of the siding, the, there are different fiber cement brands and there was one that was very typical that would move a lot and this was pretty typical mm -hmm. and that was the old certainty siding. Okay. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, it went into some uh, class action litigation mm -hmm. because of some of these problems. And that's not a good detail there, no matter what siding you're using. Yeah, that's right. So my, you know, what I've always felt is if I find one or two of these, yeah, I might, you know, sort of caulk it and hold it all together. But, but if, if I'm finding 10, 20, 30 of these, then we're looking at kind of a, a chronic failure of the siding system at that point. Um, that's right. Uh, and you probably have to replace the boards. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, once you're replacing 10 boards on a side of a house, it's like, well, <laughs> tearing the whole thing apart at that point, pretty much uh, hard to just. By that time, it. you're probably finding some other problems as well. Th that's that's right. That's right. That gets to one of my favorite sayings of uh, the, the a home inspection is a series of observations that tell me how worried I should be about what I don't know. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. So, you know, you see one or two of these, it's, you're probably okay, but you start seeing 10 or 20 of these and, and you're, you're probably hitting that zone of other stuff coming up. Hey, wh while we're on that topic, do you have any good tips for us to distinguish hardy from certainty? Those are the two most common ones, I believe. I, where I am, I almost only see certain or uh, hardy. I, I, you know, that's like 98% of the market here or something. There are some varying grains differences and, and, the hardy today is different than the hardy of yesterday. I I remember at least three distinct different graining patterns in your typical eight and a quarter inch lap siding. Mm -hmm. And so um, you'd, you'd have to look at it and compare it. Yeah. No, and that's, you know, I, I've gotten to the point where I've done this enough that I can kind of tell products that aren't hardy by looking at them. But I, if you said, you know, write down for me how you're going to tell somebody else to do that, it's like, well, I don't know what to say. They just look different. You know, I, that there's not like a, a, a fake knot or some distance between fake knots or something. You know, all the techniques we might have used with the hardboard sidings, we don't really have for fiber cement. Well, there, you, you can get some, you can go in and, and look at some examples and make there's some identifying characteristics okay. of the various sightings but then you got to know about when it was put on to and then mm -hmm. you got to wonder well was it stored in the lumberyard so that it was last generations or not yeah yeah but, interesting yeah cool good stuff um so yeah what what would you say <laughs> how about this butt joint layout <laughs> that that's creative yeah it is it sort of makes you wonder about the framing and or the siding I, Sort of brings up more questions. I, I'd say they're not breaking on the studs. Yeah, certainly. And it's it's a pretty lazy man's way to apply the siding. That's right. It makes you worry about what else they might have been doing that we don't know because it's just there'll be sides like that. Man, it's just terrible detail. Um, yes. All right. Uh, you'd get a kick out of this, I, and this is just good home inspection stuff. But I went around new construction and I found the the butt joint flashings, and but then I got a little suspicious, so I got the ladder out and when I went up high to look for them, <laughs> and and of course they weren't where you they they put butt joint flashings where you could get to them without a ladder, but they were missing where you needed a ladder to check them. <laughs> that almost makes you wonder if it wasn't retrofitted from the original. Yeah. That and was, yeah. This and was, and this, this was this specific one. No, but this is exactly what happened. So I found missing butt joint flashings up high, and, and then the builder went back, and that this is where they retrofit them uh, in the spots that were hard to reach. <laughs> I see. I see. And if and that also looks to be about a 16-inch, uh, you know, each stud oh, sure. lap there. Yeah. And, and Hardy definitely in their liter literature says to do it every 32 inches just to give it a little more randomness mm -hmm. I, it doesn't affect the operation of the siding per se but they don't want you to do the stair step look yeah it doesn't look as good yeah you'd be w way better off having that more more random yeah that's yes good good eye there 
Uh, cool. So that's some butt joint things. Uh, so flashing, I mean, this is something that really changed. Whenever you look at the old installations, they would just cram the siding right down onto the flashing. And often then a painter would come back and caulk it. So um, do you know when they started in Hardy started, you know, giving the air gap here to the base of the siding, the quarter inch? I would, I would have to look in some of my old Hardy uh, information. Yep. Uh, I have all these from from way back and I was talking to some reps from Hardy yeah. trying to call, talk them into not talk them and talk them into uh, to making a little timeline for us so we could actually know when they changed all these things would just be interesting I, my guess is around 2008 but I, I could be off there there was a change about then it used to be when Hardy first came out they said maintain a two inch clearance from the roof shingles Mm -hmm. And then they dropped, they said, one to two inches. Mm -hmm. And then then they went back to two inches in the zone five. Mm -hmm. There's a zone five and a zone 10. And the zone 10 is the southern states that don't exhibit the freeze thaw. And zone five is the northern, yep. which do. And it's definitely two inches yep. in the northern states in the zone five. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I, interestingly, I mean, I'm I'm all the way up in Washington, which is far north, but we're not the freeze thaw. We got the Pacific Ocean moderating our climate yeah. for us, but uh, so we're we're HC10. So you know, this is obviously incorrect. They they ran the siding right up to the flashing, but you know, if it for me, if I see this up under a roof overhang or something, I, it's just not worth fixing. It just kind of is what it is. It's not correct, but not really worth worth fixing. Uh, so this uh, this is kind of the modern one, one other thing I would say on that last one mm -hmm. is there is not a flashing over the top of there, that trim there, board there, there either. There actually is. It's super hard to see, but um, I don't know. I'm like following my little mouse along. It's I I see it there at the nail. Yeah, I see half of the nail showing. That's right. They just painted it so you yeah. can hardly see it. But you know that's a good example of what's not really correct today. I mean, that flashing probably almost has a reverse slope. There's no gap, um, but they did at least do a flashing. But I happen to know, because I took this picture, that it was just right up underneath, like two feet overhang or something. So, um, you know, the, the eaves are just above, you know, where you can see in the picture here. So it was, it was pretty protected. You know, here we're more exposed to detail. And what you had some advice on this, Mark, what, you know, you know this is kind of how we would, might see a lot of fiber cement today. The advice I had for you at the time is where that caulking is there at the edge. Yeah, right here. That needs to be squished in, for lack of a better term, that caulking all the way along that joint, all yep. the way back to the back so that it acts as a an end dam of sorts. Yep. When I get to one of those, if I can take a paper clip or a wire and put it behind the caulking, then I know that is, why don't you draw a little line showing how I would insert the kind of like probe. That's right. That's if it, it would, if it would probe behind that caulking, yeah. then it's not done right. That's yeah. right. You got it. Cool. Yeah. Great tip. I mean, I, I learned that from you, uh, you know, when we were talking, but, um, you know, when you see those caulk joints and, and you can really imagine a lot of water is going to sit on this edge. And if it were able to get back behind there pretty easily, then you could get um, just a little river of water coming back. So a nice little. So Mark was, I think you said, suggested like a paper clip or like a nail or something. Pa or a coat hanger. Coat, hanger. coat hangers make great probes. Cool. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, that's good, good, good stuff, Mark. So uh, some cool little tools that we could bring with us uh, for for inspecting those joints. So uh, here we see kind of that that classic detail where they put the siding right up onto the flashing, and we're starting to get a cracked corner there. Uh, I guess my instinct would be if if you just see one or two of those, you you caulk it and paint it. If you start seeing a lot of that, then it's starting to be problematic. Yeah, I I would I would say that, and a lot of times you see that when the gap at the side there about where your thumb is the yep. siding is is gap too there's no gap and it's too tight yeah and when the siding moves it it cracks apart now the the, yeah, the the hardy guys have, have sold me that their product moves less than the building and that that you're often dealing with just the building expanding and contracting how do you feel about that I, it's all sort of amazing to think about but 
the, their product, the Hardy, the new Hardy Zone 5, and I can't speak for the Zone 10 mm -hmm. because I don't deal with the Zone 10, but it does not move very much. There are some other brands, as, I, as we were talking, the Certainty, it moved quite a bit. It, it would actually be delivered at a higher moisture content, and then when you put it on the house, it would it would shrink. Interesting. And you know, the buck joints would close, and all the nails at the ends would pop loose. And, Interesting. And yeah. then it would drop out of plane. Yeah. Let's see. So this was this is worth a conversation. I mean, these are hard when you're a home inspector, but new construction and you know, you do a ten or fifteen year old Hardy and you kind of know it's not installed right before you get out of the car, and you know you got the sort of I, I, you, you can use the metric of of uh, you know how it's performed to date. Um, but here we're you know brand new construction, and this is a freeze board detail, and you can see that the frayed edge where they kind of rip down the siding to fit on this small little space and course it's it's you know so now you have the exposed cement clearly you know not primed touching. not primed or painted and it's yeah. touching there yeah. should be a quarter inch gap there minimum yeah. and it should be primed and, primed and sealed and, and slope to drain you know the flash mm -hmm. slope so this is just a, a pulled back image of that you know that the uh, this one was a close oops sorry this one was a close up and then i sort of pulled back to get this picture but um you know, you start seeing some other red flags here, right? You, we've got these fan vents cut in. Boy, that looks like water could would love to get in there. We have uh, a penetration greater than an inch and a half and no mounting block. Um, almost looks like some other crazy little fan cover over there. But this freeze board detail is not, not great. And, you know, it's tricky. How far do you go on new construction? Do you know, that you think the builder is going to pull this all apart and redo it? <laughs> well, you call it out. Yep. And then it's up to the builder. Yep. That's right. That's sort of, I, I never found out what happened to this one, but I kind of doubt it, but I, I had a pretty long list on it. Um, and many of those flashings on top of those one inch boards are not sloped mm -hmm. to drain Yeah. because they use a standard Z flashing that is given to them by the supplier, the lumber yard, who's ever supplying and, and they're not sloped. That's, you'd have to almost pre-bend it to get any kind of slope out of it. That's right. You would. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So not sloped, not gapped. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the important call outs, even if it's new construction and you're not going to win the fight, you want to cover yourself uh, and protect your client and at least mention these things. Uh, yes. So, uh, so clearance to grade, we all know six inches. Um, soil contact, I think we all kind of know that that's just not good for the siding. Stop me if you want to discuss any of this more, but we can, I mean, this is one of those classic hardy things where they, they, the, the concrete guy comes in, he pours the concrete over the siding. It's clearly not correct. There's simply nothing you can do short of ripping out all the concrete and the odds of anybody doing that is not very good. So that's right. We've, we've cut that siding out before and then put a metal flashing on top and embed it in the sealant but even that's not the the best thing mm -hmm. if if that's covered with a if that's a, a front stoop entryway into a house and mm -hmm. it's covered with a roof um you get a little bit of protection there but yep. that, no that's not a good detail no it's not but there's not the one thing that in fairness if i wish they would plan this but if you were to design your framing so that the foundation you hung the joists off the foundation where you had spots like this uh then you know you'd probably have to just do everything like that but then you could go right up to the foundation with it you know yes um but um as hardy has a great line in their instruction manual that um, it's around mounting blocks and, and that all penetrations greater than an inch and a half should have a mounting block. And then it says, this may require some planning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what? planning would help. Here we are. Mounting I'll tell you blocks. what, the all penetrations greater than, there's a penetration yep. that is less than an inch and a half, but a hose bib, now that's less than an inch and a half too, but I would still say that you need a mounting block on a hose bib yeah that's probably that's smart that's right and that's i mean probably you're, you're like all these people are grabbing it and and 
playing with it and you know twisting it and stuff so you got a mounting issue there but um that's yeah. right so and it looks like my slide is wrong it's actually it should be inch and a half here um I, I know i changed that in other slides somehow this one didn't but um in any event i mean technically this is a, a, an opening smaller than an inch and a half so you could just caulk that um, but i agree with mark a hose bib you might want to call out out for it so this is hardy's diagram of kind of how they recommend and you can retrofit a mounting block where you cut it in half if you weather cut that that block um, so they can be retrofit um, see it all the time mounting blocks with no head flashing i'm assuming there that just Calk it. It's a maintenance area. You know. You know the, that's interesting because that's a mounting block with a slope surface. They put a slope surface on. Yep. So the code says no horizontal. All horizontal wood trim will be protected of the flashing. Well, that's no longer a horizontal trim. Interesting. With that slope on there, so they're getting out of it a little bit. But there should still be a bead of sealant along the top of that light mm -hmm. and down either side most of the way yeah. keeping the open the bottom open so that it could drain so maybe a, a good testing procedure just sort of run your hand up there just feel for the the caulk if you can uh make sure yes advise people they need to keep it sealed cool yeah that's good stuff uh this is one we see a lot i mean the mounting block but no no flashing no gap above it, and now the block is cracked. I bet you a lot of water could move in in, in that gap, huh? It almost looks like that. It, there could be. It almost looks like that was a two-piece block that they put on. Yeah. If, does, if you uh, look at the bottom yeah. on that, and there's a gap down there as well, yeah. probably is. That looks like a pretty, uh, a pretty straight crack, if you will, and it almost looks like there was some sealant put between it. Yeah. So I, I'd that's not a good detail no it's gonna let some water in that's and this is the correct orientation of how i found it where it's facing up here so it's yeah, yes that's gonna let some water in um boy you see these all the time the kitchen fan vent i mean they never have mounting blocks <laughs> um and this is a tricky detail because i mean you, you could do a mounting block but if you're going to use that same fan cover you're still going to have this sort of ugly detail where that flange piece is going to sit right on a, a mounting block that's that's not really the best exactly you know? um so i i find kitchen fans just so seldom seem to be vented well and and if you were it's interesting mark but what if you were to lay that into the siding the little flange it's got is not worth its salt i mean it, that's such a small little flange it's it's gonna have a hard time keeping water out don't you think yeah yeah uh, you can at least embed that in sealant and give it half a chance yep yeah, but by the time you get your quarter inch gap there, you just don't have a whole lot of overlap there. So No, you don't. I, I think you could argue maybe that fan is just not really meant for any kind of exposed location or that, yeah. that, that cover. But anyway. Put little roofs over everything. Yeah, there you go. Roof overhangs. All hail the roof overhang. Uh, so 2000 build, you never see the, the um, flashings on the crawl space vents, but here's what they'll look like. This is a picture I, you know, same, same house here and you... Get behind that's it, a good you, picture that's exactly what's happening yeah and in a lot of areas on the uh, the building envelope and yeah. people don't see it that, and that's you know that's if it was in the wall with insulation around it yeah you don't see right. it that's right and so this was one of those lucky ones where it had it this was at a crawl space um with a little pony wall so you could kind of go in the crawl space and it's like oh well they're leaking <laughs> um so yeah uh, good good picture for newer home inspectors this is obviously the stuff we're worried about behind there uh we'll go through hardy trim real quick uh the cap over detail why don't we finish up with this um so boy i you know this is one of these fights i have with, with builders all the time but they you, you see this this trim detail where they just cap the 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 trim over and, and i guess what you hear is that the, the trim is all sacrificial and that this you know flashing over the window is the actual flashing what, what are your have you noticed any problems with this cap over detail sure the the wood deteriorates mm -hmm. because water gets down in and behind the trim now, is it going to get into the interior of the building envelope? I don't know if that if that uh, head flashing over the window is in good shape and integrated right, and if the window's taped in and flashed in right and the siding is there, it's possible that the only thing sacrificial there is the uh, trim around the window. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I don't think that looks good. No, no, it's... 
I, I, you know, I just been around and around with the builders and the building department. I mean, this was new construction probably a year ago or something. And so the building department seems to be okay with it. And, um, I, I just think it's kind of a poor detail, but it's, it's a, a lovely place to grow ferns. <laughs> yeah. Right. We, we know that's a poor detail. There's no argument. Yeah. Um, so, and then this is the, our, our flashing code here. And so my argument is that this trim doesn't meet flashing. That's a horizontal piece of trim. Their argument is that it's the, the, the penetration is really the window and that that's flashed. So anyway, um, and this is what a, a diagram Hardy shared with me, but this is their kind of hybrid solution they're coming to with, um, they're going to recommend when you're using Hardy trim that you can't do that cap over detail for the header you have to have a lead in header but then you can do the other three sides with the cap over detail sure yeah and i i i don't know that i like that but it's if you if you perform it correctly put the z flashing in there and it's it's gonna it's gonna perform yep yeah, it, it seems like a better detail than the other that we saw where you, you just have the full cap over detail. So I, I think it's an improvement. Um, so cool, Mark. Well, um, I, we could keep going, but I, I think uh, nice to keep these segments short and just get a little taste for it. Um, if anybody's watching this and you like what you're seeing, let us know because Mark and I can try to meet up again. I've been wanting to do one with Mark with uh, uh, some adhered stone veneer stuff. You've got some great presentations on that. And maybe we can do a little excerpt from one of them or something. That'd be excellent. Yeah. Sure. Awesome, Mark. Well, hey, thanks so much for taking the time, being with us today, sharing a little bit of your insight with a few hearty details. And I hope it was helpful, everybody. Thanks for watching. This podcast was brought to you by Dylan Chalk House Talk. A big thanks to the Confident House Hunter, a great tool for home buyers and realtors for getting out in front of the home inspection. And as always, a big thanks to Scribeware Software, the best home inspection report writing software in the industry.